How's it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to QS Waterman. Welcome back to Key West Waterman, boys and girls. My name is Aaron Young. Uh, if you saw the last episode, uh, it was about African pompano. We put two beautiful African pompanos in the boat deep in the Gulf of Mexico. There was another lost fish that came and found us on this wreck. We were on, on the hook on a wreck in about 100 feet, and I, I hear James start to scream. And of all the fish that I expected to see, it was not a wahoo. Get that marauder ready just in case he comes back. If this is your first time watching, I'll kind of update you on what's going on. My name is Aaron Young. I'm a charter captain and commercial spear fisherman out of Key West, Florida. Uh, this video is a little different because I'm not uh, talking topside. I didn't do any narration about the day. I wasn't in a talkative mood, so I just brought the underwater camera. So I'm going to do my narrative after the fact. Uh, we had been spearfishing for about 30, 45 minutes, shot a nice African pompano, and this wall who shows up, this is the first glimpse you actually can get of him. And I wanted to leave this clip raw because a lot of times you get a false sense of what actually happens, how long it takes, what goes on. Me and this fish went at it for a while. Uh, James and Lisa had pole spears in their hands. There's friends of mine that were visiting in town. They visit multiple times a year, if you did not see the last episode. Um, they had pole spears. I'm the only one that had a gun and trying to land a, a wahoo on a pole spear is quite the task. Um, getting them to even come into gun range can be very difficult. So I'm pursuing this fish, but I'm not chasing it. Um, and there definitely is a lesson here in this one, um, that I actually learned. Just kind of keep the fish within eyesight. I can tell he's curious. He came in, there's all kinds of bait on this wreck. So this fish is definitely hungry, definitely curious. He was engaging the flasher, but he wouldn't, you know, come remotely close enough for me to get a shot. You can see there's a cuda looking at it, but the anytime I would even drop to just retrieve the flasher, the, the wahoo would kind of step back and go out of range. But I could tell he was hungry, he was curious. Typically, if they're not having it, they're gone. They'll just take off. So I'm trying to be patient. I'm trying to be calm. If you've ever hunted Wahoo, no matter how many you've shot, every time you see one, your heart comes out of your chest. And it really is hard to stay calm. So I'm, I'm doing my best to stay calm. And I realize that the, all these rainbow runners are doing circles around me. And I think that's what's keeping the Wahoo kind of curious. I've never done this. I've never unloaded my gun with a Wahoo swimming around unless I'm shooting at the Wahoo. So I kind of make a bold leap here and take one of these rainbow runners for chum and i'm intentionally letting him swim around on my shaft i want to try to entice that wahoo try and try and bring it back get it a little more curious let him know that there is a food source um not something i would typically do or recommend doing um this rainbow runner actually made more of a mess than i had hoped for but um i just wanted to have some some sort of better chum i know a lot of times i'll carry a blue runner or a small rainbow runner or something if i have one frozen or in the freezer or something, I'll bring them out for Wahoo, but I didn't have anything on me except for that throw flasher. I'm doing my best here. Honestly, not to focus on the Wahoo because a, a lot of times they can sense, sense your intention, sense what you're up to. So I'm trying to ignore it. And doing this, I've had a lot of fish swim up to me. So again, I'm letting that fish purposely stay alive. I want him swimming around. I want that Wahoo to sense the struggle. And I wanted to leave this video a little more raw because I wanted you to feel like you're actually there with me. If I just showed you the fish coming in and then showed you the shot, it would it kind of lose the reality of actually how this went down, how long it took, and you know, just wanted to be a little more raw. Long story short. So this fish is still swimming around. I can see him in the corner of my eye, but I'm trying not to stare at him. I don't think the camera picks him up because he's so far out. He's on my right side. I glance over there a couple times. I can still see him. I know he's he's kind of curious. And a lot of times, not a lot of times, um, a few times, I think in some of my older videos, you'll see I use whole fish as flashers. Um, works pretty well. If they're not having the throw flasher, try and get you a whole fish, whole blue runner, speedo. Shoot, even a small cereal mackerel or something would work. 
So I'm working back towards the boat. I'm, I'm following the fish without engaging him. He's on my right side, and I know Lisa and James are up in front of me, so I'm hoping it's going to go by one of them to get them a shot because a, a wahoo on pole spear is kind of the holy grail, uh, in my opinion, for pole spear fish. Getting reloaded, staying mellow as best I can, trying to breathe. Again, if you've ever hunted Wahoo, it is very, very difficult to stay calm. I'm trying to locate where they are now. I think it went right by her. <clears throat> what are the odds? When we first got here, I almost told you to load that gun just in case. Oh, is it really? I don't have any crimps. Five minutes. So what James was saying there is he had a blue water gun in the boat and he went to rig it up. That's what I screamed at uh, at the, the beginning of the video to get the gun ready. Um, and he took his gun somewhere to get the line strung and apparently it was the wrong length and um, he couldn't get it rigged and we didn't have any crimps. So that's why they still had pole spears in their hands. And I turned the camera off just for a split second because I thought the fish left and Lisa was off the bow of the boat and she told me that the wahoo swam right by her within 20 feet or so but wouldn't come close enough for the pole spear. So I went over to the port side of the boat and see if this thing would come back and he did. He came still curious. Luckily I still had that fish on me. And I'm not really swimming at the wahoo. I'm just kind of sitting still trying to get its curiosity going, wiggling that fish around because they can tell the difference between that stick and a fish. That throw flasher I use is just PVC and vinyl. Yes, it'll get them curious, but it's not its not a meal to them. They know. So now I have an actual whole fish, and I'm flinging it in front of me, letting it sink, trying to just get him to come in just within range, distract it enough that I can get a shot. And I made a mistake here. I, I dropped a little early. He knew what was up. I didn't wait for him to get close enough to that fish. And this has got to be the one of the most stressful scenarios ever. As if you can see a wall, you can see a wall who, but you cannot get to it. Along with black grouper, this is my favorite fish to hunt, without a doubt. So I threw it again. He comes in. I wait for him to get a little closer this time drop right on top of him. I'm only two feet under the surface of the water and he comes close enough and I put a shaft in him. And typically a wahoo's going to run like crazy. And for some reason he didn't. I think this fish was super hungry. Maybe he was malnourished. He was by himself. Um, not sure, but he, he didn't make the run that he normally would. Or maybe where I hit him in the head was... I'm sorry, I could not take it. I could not take it. Maybe where I hit him in the head was... Um, enough to, to daze him or kind of phase him a little bit. But James comes over, he had a float line on his pole spear, and we clip this on there just in case. You never know what these fish are going to do. I've had wahoo berry floats for 10, 15 minutes before they pop back up, so just wanted to be safe. And especially shooting these things on a reel. Float line's a little easier to manage. Um, but that reel line's real easy to get wrapped up in. Go grab, go grab the other gun. So I'm pulling this fish in. I'm put and I'm throwing the line behind me because you do not want that line to get wrapped around your hand, your feet, your weight belt, anything. And a shark grabs it, the fish takes off. Then you're then you're worried about drowning and not you know not landing a fish. Just easing him, easing him in. I wasn't sure how good of a shot I had, especially with a flopper. I like to use slip tips with Wahoo. So 
So I actually cut this clip a little short because I fought this thing for quite a while. I was kind of babying it. Um, but man, what a fish. Did not expect this fish to see here. I've never seen a Wahoo in the Gulf of Mexico. If you did not see the last video of the African Pompano, this was the same morning. Just wanted to split the clips because they were kind of different lessons. Um, just really, really an unbelievable morning for me. You can see the line kind of getting wrapped around me there. And I'm kind of panicking to get it off me because I don't want that fish to come loose. Then I'm wrapped. But that is all I got. <laughs> Pumped. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to hit the like button. I do appreciate your guys' time. I hope you guys enjoyed the videos. And send me some ideas. And I will see you on the next one. Hopefully the Wahoo will be here soon. Full time for the winter. Later. Huh? No, you're good.